I am sitting outside of the therapist office where I'm going to be doing my first appointment for EMDR. I have no idea what to expect. They didn't tell me, like, I don't know if today's just going to be like an intake or if they immediately start into the EMDR method. I would assume they kind of start into it today because you fill out all of, all of the paperwork ahead of time and it was very extensive and they say that you have to have that done in order to start the treatment because they need to be able to dig into all of that. So I don't know, I'm, I'm a little anxious. You know, of course there are thoughts of like, what if this is something that doesn't work for me? Like what if the stuff that I deal with is not ideal for this, even though I know based on research and listening to psychologists that it, it is. Uh, but there are those thoughts, but I'm also excited because <laughs> just driving here, my appointment is two hours away from home and I had anxiety about everything. I had anxiety about being late. I had anxiety about finding a place to eat. I had anxiety about the location that it was in, not knowing where to park. And that is like me every single day about everything. And it's just getting worse. I feel like my anxiety used to be more... I have generalized anxiety, but it used to be more specific. Like I could always put, you know, I could put my finger on what the like root cause was. And now I just, I'm, I'm literally the person that's like, oh, it's lightning. I'm definitely going to get struck by lightning today. I just have anxiety about everything. So we'll see. Uh, I don't know if I will post anything or record anything right after just because it is a long drive home and I have to get home to pick up the kids but here we go day one EMDR therapy I am sitting outside of my therapist office for my second EMDR session the irony in this is that one of the big reasons I'm coming to EMDR is because my anxiety has flared up to the point of it being like uncontrollable and yet coming to this area gives me so much anxiety. The traffic is awful, the roads awful. Like, so every time I come, like on starting the way here, I felt perfectly fine. I felt calm and at ease. And now that I'm here, like my, like I'm breaking out in like a hive, like I'm stressed, <laughs> anxious. Yeah, I had planned to do a sit down video for the first appointment. I don't even know that I filmed an update after I got out. So the first appointment, we didn't do anything other than just um, talk. We just kind of went over like my history, over my paperwork, the stuff that I touched on. Um, you know, she was kind of explaining EMDR, but whenever she had started any kind of conversation about it, she's like, well, I'm sure you know this <laughs> because the first thing I told her well, in the beginning, when we started talking just about the way I am and the way I process information, I said, if you don't think that I have listened to every podcast that there is about EMDR therapy, if you don't think I've watched every YouTube video there is about EMD <laughs> EMDR therapy, I've read books about it, um, you are wrong. So that's the way that I, I process information. We just kind of talked and went over everything and, you know, the, the main traumas that I am here for and triggers and things like that. She said that we wouldn't actually be doing any kind of eye movement for a while, for a few appointments. So, I mean, I went into the last appointment assuming something just because the email legitimately said you cannot have this appointment without filling out this paperwork because she's not able to do the EMDR treatment without all of this information. I assumed that the first appointment would kind of start right into it, but that's on me for assuming. My husband always says, don't assume anything. But here I go again, I'm assuming today is going to be, I think maybe she'll just kind of discuss how did it feel last week, um, maybe, and I assume, I'm using, assume, 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 take a shot every time I say assume. Uh, I think maybe we're gonna do the work today where we establish like 
and EMDR, I don't, I don't want to talk too much about it because I'm not a doctor, but you basically establish like safe places. Like anytime you are feeling overwhelmed, you have a safe space or you also need to create your idea of a container. So like for some people, it might be a mason jar with a lid for other people. It might be a door with a lock and that container becomes like the visual image in your mind where you put your negative experiences or your negative emotions or uh, negative words that you say about yourself, you put them in that container and lock them away. So I'm, I'm wondering, I'm assuming maybe we'll do all of that today. Just like establishing the safe zones that I need to actually get into the therapy. But I'll let you guys know. I'm just waiting. I'm early to my appointment. I am on my way home from therapy. I'm on a back road, so, you know, I'm not going to be paying attention to the camera, but like I'm being safe. Uh, so today was what I assumed it was going to be. We just kind of like played a quick catch up on the past week. And if anything major happened, something kind of major happened. I got into a fight with, um, somebody, an argument with somebody, and it was, I could recognize that the argument came from me being triggered by my anxiety and about how the present moment would affect um, a moment later on in life. So the reason that's relevant is because it kind of shows like how the issues that I'm going into therapy for are manifesting in my day-to-day -day life every week. But after that, we did all of the framework for EMDR. So the first thing that we did today was to, like I said, define the container that you wanted. And essentially the container, she described it as, it's not a way to avoid things forever, but it's kind of like if something gets too overwhelming, if there's something you kind of want to step back from, take a break, you know, because, you know, for example, you go out into the world, it's not okay to have a meltdown at work. <laughs> so the, my container is a mason jar. A lot of people do things like a door with a lock. And I, you know, I told her something about that doesn't, just doesn't like draw anything out of me because I picture a door, you open the door, there's a big room, like my brain overthinks it. So a lot of EMDR is doing the things that or discussing the things or using the tools that just come to you naturally, come to you with instinct. And for me, that was a mason jar. Something about the thought of a jar, putting something in it, closing the lid real tight, but then you can, you know, open it whenever you need to. That works for me. Then we did a visual a visualization of the place that brings you the most comfort. Um, I don't know if that's, you know, a place that you can escape to if things become too overwhelming. And that place for me is in Nicaragua, where my husband is from, his country. And every time we go there, I just always feel completely at peace. Like I feel so peaceful, I feel happy, I love the pace of life, I love the people. And then you kind of walk through the five senses there. So, you know, what do you see at that place in your mind? What do you smell? What can you touch? Like what can you feel? What can you hear? So we did all that, you know, for example, mine was kids laughing. I can feel the sand at the beach running through my fingers. I can smell the food. I can taste the food. So there was that. And then the hardest part was doing what they call a roadmap. I don't know the full term for it, but it's a roadmap. And the roadmap starts like it's past, present and future. So you have to identify a phrase that you, what do you, like a phrase that you identify with, even if you know logically in your brain that it's not true, that's the whole point of EMDR. So it's like, what phrase does your body identify with when you think of these past traumas? And for me, it is, I feel powerless. That is like my negative, uh, I was gonna say affirmation, but that, that's like a positive thing. Um, it's I am powerless because I only have power over me and some of my traumas relate to other people. Some of my traumas relate to other people. So there are things that I cannot control. Um, but so yeah, I feel powerless because I only have control over how I'm healing from traumas. I don't have control over how other people in my life, um, deal with it themselves and then you know for my dog 
it's the same kind of feeling because with her, we did everything that we could do. We spent all the money, the resources, um, trying to get her better, and the end still didn't. It didn't. It didn't end how we would like it to. I mean, she had to be put down. So um, that's just a small example of one of the tiniest traumas that we're dealing with because you do have to kind of confront those things, even if they seem silly or you feel like it's not. It doesn't have a big enough impact. It does. So um, we did that, and then you have to think of like a positive affirmation. I don't remember what it's called, like an alternative affirmation or something like that. And that's what we want the brain to associate the traumas with later. And for me, that was, I recognize what I can control and what I cannot control. Um, and so that tackles the anxiety because I have a lot of anxiety about things that I cannot control. For example, I'm at the place in my life now, being a 30 year old woman, where I'm like, what if I die tomorrow? Would my kids be okay? You know, being 10 and nine years old, have I taught them enough? Have I instilled enough in them that if I were to leave, would they be okay? And obviously you can't live life like that. I have no control over what happens to me, but as we work through it, I can kind of recognize that thought process and change it. So one thing I have recognized about myself in the past few years, and now especially, I recognize this in my past therapy, but this therapist, I just relate to her a lot more. I feel like she's really good at understanding conversation. And one thing I'm really recognizing about myself is I disassociate from my traumas. I have a really hard time talking about the things that okay let me put it this way when I talk about the one trauma in my life that essentially started all the other <laughs> all the other like things that really kicked my anxiety into overdrive that kicked my depression into overdrive it's the thing that day to day affects me the most it's the thing that I have to confront the most often it um you know I have to like I go through my days like well what if this happens with this or oh this is happening so it's bringing me back to this it's definitely a day-to-day -day trauma. It affects me every single day. And for some reason, when I talk about that, I get really like stone cold and it doesn't, my body doesn't react as aggressively. But when I talk about loss and grief, every time I start crying, even though day-to-day -day that does not impact me as much, it hasn't had as big of an effect on my thoughts and my anxiety and my depression, that is what I end up crying over. That's what my body responds to. And I don't quite understand it. I have theories. You know, part of me thinks like because the other trauma is like lingering in my body, it causes me to be more emotional about the things that aren't as impactful. Um, but she did say that that is very normal. And another thing she said was, you know, as we are continuously walking through these things, she's like, you are so aware of your emotions like you are crazy aware of your emotions I don't have to tell you anything that I'm telling you which by the way I heard that from my last therapist uh, so we're moving really quickly because she's just like you really recognize that and you know oh something maybe that comes up with your kids most other parents don't recognize that but you are so aware you know the psychology of it so we're doing a little bit of work with that because she's having to work with somebody that recognizes where emotions are coming from and triggers are coming from. And that's kind of what I keep trying to explain to her. This is why I want to do the EMDR because logically my brain knows that the trauma is not like life threatening, that I can deal with it. Um, I don't feel helpless. I could go into a whole other video about that. My, my, my phrase was, I feel powerless, not I feel helpless because I don't feel helpless. I don't feel like the victim. My brain doesn't think that, but even still my body reacts to these things. It reacts to stimulus and triggers. And so I don't know where I was going with that because I'm, I'm so focused on driving. Um, but that's why I'm doing the EMDR because logically I know where I'm at and where I want to be, but my body just hasn't caught up. And you know, that's why we kind of cut back to the book the body keeps score because even if you've dealt with your traumas and you work through them the brain just changes anyways i'm rambling on for a long time now so i'm gonna go that was 
appointment number two next week she said we're gonna finish the like the positive affirmation roadmap and then we should start the eye movement process either next week or the week after she said we're moving through it quickly so yep I'll see you guys in the next one